Okay, welcome to our second example on Bernoulli's equation. This is going to be a hydroelectric power example. And we're gonna split this part uh, video into actually two videos. And we're going to answer these two questions right here. So let's look at the situation first. So in this system, we have a reservoir here. And that reservoir is filled up and there is a dam that's holding back this water. Now, at some point inside of that dam, there is an intake pipe right there. And then that pipe flows all the way down into a power plant. And this power plant has a turbine inside of it. So the liquid that's uh, coming into this power plant is spinning a turbine. And that turbine is generating um, electricity. So you'll often see these systems in places like mountains where they have a reservoir at the top of the mountain and then they have intake pipes here and then that water flows down into a power plant that's much closer to the surface of the earth or at the base of the mountain. And that's how they generate electricity or hydrostatic or hydroelectric power using water. In this question, there are really two sub questions. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at this first question, which is what is the speed of the flow entering the tube at point two? So in other words, right here at point two, the intake pipe, what is the flow velocity of the water there? And then in the second part of this question, we're going to look at the difference between the hydrostatic and the inlet pressure at point two. So here at point two, there is actually two pressures we're looking at. We have our regular P2 pressure, and then we also have our static pressure. And the question is asking, what is the difference between these two pressures at point two? So that's what we'll look at in the second video. So for this video, we're only going to look at part A here. What is the speed of the flow entering the tube at point two? Now, I want to dive into this diagram a little bit more. So the reservoir, the top of the reservoir is at 250 meters above this zero point here. And the power plant itself, which is at point three, is at the datum point or at the zero line. Point two is about 50 meters below the surface of the reservoir at elevation 200. Point two has an intake pipe, and this entire pipe is circular. Circular. So the cross section of this pipe is circular. And at point two, the diameter of that pipe is 100 centimeters. And here at point three, the diameter is half that. So it's 50 centimeters. A few more things. We're going to model this liquid inside of this pipe as an ideal fluid. And we're going to take the mass density of the water to be 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. OK, that's enough for the diagram. I will go back to part A of this question, the speed at point two. So there's a few things to note. In order to get the flow velocity here at point two, we need to know the pressure at that point. And right now we don't have that information. However, we do know the pressure here at one because this is open to the atmosphere. So at point one, the pressure here is just P atmospheric pressure, whatever the atmosphere pressure is. Uh, right at point one. And we also know that at point three, inside of the power plant, once the flow exits this tube, that the pressure there is also going to be the atmospheric pressure because the water inside of this power plant is now open to the atmosphere just as point one is. The only difference here is there's just a building here, but inside of the building, the pressure is going to be the same as the atmosphere. So because we don't have enough information about point two yet, what we can do instead is apply Bernoulli's equation to points one and three, and then figure out the flow velocity here at point three, and then use that velocity at point three to back calculate the velocity at point two using the continuity equation. And if you remember the continuity equation is A1 times V1, the area times velocity is A2 times v2. In this case, it's going to be points two and three. This is just a general case for one and two. To answer part a of this question, let's go ahead and apply Bernoulli's equation to this streamline where it connects one and point three. So point one and point three. We'll apply Bernoulli's equation there to get the velocity at three and then use that velocity at three to back calculate the velocity at two. And that should answer this first question. OK, so I'll just go ahead and write the Bernoulli's equation here for point one and three. Here we are the Bernoulli's equation for points one and three along that streamline from point one to point three. 
and there's a few terms here. Uh, P's are pressure, this rho value is our mass density, uh, small lowercase v is our velocity of the fluid at that point, uh, G is our gravitational constant, and Y is the elevation from the datum up to whatever point that we're looking at. So for point one, it's going to be this 250 meters. At point three, because it's along the datum, the Y3 value right here is going to be zero. Okay, so let's look at P1, pressure one. So pressure one is equal to our atmospheric pressure. So atmospheric pressure. Now, because this dam can be up in the mountain somewhere, the higher you go in our atmosphere, the less and less pressure there is. So I can't assume that the pressure at one is equal to our uh, one ATM pressure, which is our 101.5. Uh, three kilopascals. I can't assume that because if this dam were to be placed up in the mountains, the pressure of the atmosphere there is going to be a little bit less than our 101.3 kilopascals, right? The higher you go up in our atmosphere, the less and less pressure there is. So for simplicity, I'm just going to call that P atmos, which stands for the atmospheric pressure. How about V1? So V1 is interesting. What is the velocity at point one? So as this fluid goes into the intake and then down the pipe and into the power plant, you'll know intuitively that the surface of the reservoir will go down. However, because the surface area of this surface is very, very large and the diameter of this pipe is much smaller than the you know, surface area of this reservoir, then we know that the water level here is going to drop extremely slowly. And that is relative to the flow velocity in this pipe. So the velocity here at two is gonna be a lot faster but this water line is going to drop much, much slower. So in other words, I can assume V1 to be roughly close to zero meters per second, just for the sake of simplicity. How about Y1? So Y1, again, is the distance from our datum, which is here at point zero, up to that point, which is point one. So that is at an elevation 250 meters. Okay, cool, so we have a lot of the terms for the left side of the equation. Let's look at the right side. So let's look at P3. Well, P3 is really open to the atmosphere. So once the liquid exits this uh, intake pipe, and what I really should have done was drawn P3 right here where it exits the pipe into the power plant. Actually, let me do that. Okay, I realized I can't do that because this picture right here was just a screenshot. So let's assume that point three is actually right here, right next to the power plant. Or in other words, right when the flow exits the pipe and enters the power plant. So at that point, at this point three right here, uh, the, atmos uh, the pressure P3 is gonna be, well, it's gonna be the atmospheric pressure. Why? Because it's exited the pipe, it's going into the power plant, and the power plant, well, the water is exposed inside of that power plant, so the pressure there is also gonna be whatever uh, the pressure is in the atmosphere. So P3 is also going to be P atmos at that point. Now, how about V3, the velocity at three? Well, that's the exiting velocity at this end of the pipe, and we don't know that yet. So we're trying to figure out what V3 is, because then we're gonna use V3 to calculate what V2 is. So V3 is our unknown. Finally, what about Y3? Well, again, that's just the distance from our datum up to that point. And because point three is along the datum at point zero or at elevation zero, Y3 is going to be zero meters. Okay, so let's start plugging these values in. I'll scroll up just a tiny bit. So P1 is our P atmosphere. And then we have one half rho times V1, which is zero meters per second squared plus rho times g times y1 which is 250 meters and that's equal to p atmos which is 0.3 or pressure at three plus one half rho v3 which is our unknown and that is squared plus rho times g times y3 which is zero so immediately this term goes to zero and then we also have this term on the left go to zero because the velocity is zero. And then you'll notice that the P at most on both sides also cancel out. So what we're left with is rho times G times 250 meters is equal to one half rho, our unknown V3 squared. 
and in this equation you'll notice that the rows cancel out. So what we're really left with is our gravity which is 9.81 meters per second squared times 250 meters is equal to one half v3 squared. And if we solve this out, v3 is approximately 70 meters per second. So that is the exiting velocity here at point three when the water escapes the pipe and goes, goes into the power plant. Okay, awesome. So we figured out what V3 is, but the question is asking what is the speed of the flow at the intake? So this is the intake at point two, what is V2? Well, now that we know what V3 is, we can use V3 to calculate V2 using our continuity equation. So I'm gonna go down here and write that continuity equation. So A3 times the velocity at three is equal to A2 times the velocity at two. And velocity at two is what we're trying to find. So let's calculate A3 first. So A3, again, this is a circular cross section or a circular pipe. So the area is just gonna be the area of a circle. And that is equal to pi times R squared. Well, what is R? Well, at point three here, the diameter is 50 centimeters. So half of that is 25 centimeters. That's the radius. But we need to convert 25 centimeters into meters. And we can do that by dividing by 100, and that gives us 0 0.25 meters. So the radius at point three is 0 0.25 meters. Okay, I'll scroll down and plug that in. So this is 0 0.25 meters. Okay, cool, what about area two? So area two is also circular, and that is equal to pi times the radius. Well, the radius in this case is 100 divided by two, which is 50 centimeters, and if we convert that to meters, that's 0.5 meters. So that is going to be 0 0.5 meters squared. Now V3 here on the left side, that was equal to 70 meters per second from this calculation right here. And then V2 is our unknown. So we can use the continuity equation right here because this is an ideal liquid model or an ideal fluid model. And if we just plug in these values into this equation, we'll get V2 is equal to 17.5 meters per second. So there we go, that's the velocity at the intake for this pipe. So that is the flow velocity right there. So that answers this first part. And in the second part, we'll look at part B. So see you then.